So up until now, we've been doing decomposition into Boyce-Codd normal form in this section. And now I'm going to throw just kind of like a new, new term into the mix that really is the same as decomposition, and that's normalization. Uh, normalization and decomposition are, are interchangeable for our viewpoint in this course. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because we're moving into the section on what we call normal forms, first, second, third normal forms, and yes, I know Boyce-Codd normal form is also a normal form, but there is this kind of natural separation that we all practice with these, and, and I will explain a little bit deeper. Boyce-Codd normal form is really more of the theoretical practice of decomposition of relations. So when you want to, you know, look to, to definitively prove this and you're building the theory of, of how things should ideally be decomposed, um, that is kind of, um, especially in the original form, what Boyce-Codd normal form was intended for. And it's important that we know this, especially because we want to be able to kind of check our work and come back to it. So all the effort we did on, you know, the written algorithms is important and um, I just want you to know at this point, I'm going to kind of leave that with Boyce-Codd normal form. I'm not going to ask you to write out the algorithm for third normal form for a couple of reasons that I'll get into. One is that it's it's honestly a lot harder to write out, so it, it gets messy. Um, there's kind of issues with some functional dependencies that you have to play around with, um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, but what I want you to know is that I'm kind of separating here you know, kind of like your responsibilities as a student, I do expect you to understand decomposition into Boyce-Codd normal form. I expect you to be able to actually practice that, um, you know, as I did in the examples. So there could definitely be a test question um, asking you to decompose into Boyce-Codd normal form using the algorithm I did and showing your results as, you know, the new relations and their functional dependencies. But I'm going to now transition into the more practical side because the honest reality of, of database design is that we really um, create them for what's normally called third normal form. And there is some differences between, well, there's really one difference between third normal form and Boyce Cod, which I'm going to get into. Um, and I, as I mentioned, third normal form written out is harder to do. But in practice, um, there's kind of some simple steps you can walk through um, understanding the progression of normal forms, first normal form, second normal form, third normal form, um, that get you to the result in practice. Now you can still use Boyce-Codd normal form to verify, and I, and I um, invite you to do that, but what we're going to be focusing on now is more likely how you're going to be thinking when you do the practical side of this course. Uh, when you're doing your UML projects and you're, you're actually creating your relations based upon uh, the requirements of the data, all right? So third normal form and Boyce-Codd normal form, as I mentioned before, are very close, but there's one exceptional difference. Let's look at the definitions of the two so that we can see exactly what that is. If we remember our Boyce-Codd normal form uh, definition, it was for every non-trivial functional dependency, remember the non-trivial part was important, uh, where we look at, you know, the set of functional dependencies, the left side being the A's over there and the right sides of them being the B's. Uh, for a relationship, the left side, those A's, had to be a super key of the relation, right? And we said we can kind of condense that down and say, more simply, the left side of the functional dependency needs to contain a key, right? That was like the more... Um, simple approach to that. And we saw how that works when we broke it down and did the algorithm on paper. Now, for third normal form, we're going to keep that definition, but we're going to add a clause. And now the reason we're going to add this clause is because, um, as described in the book, there can be problems with uh, certain situations where functional dependencies can't be split off into relations um, because they refer uh, to attributes that, that aren't available. So basically, um, there's a, a piece in the book on that. Here it is here. Example uh, 3.25. I'm not going to go through it, and I, I'm not going to ask you a question like 
please explain how this works, um, but you can see it for yourself. If you go to page 100 here, they use an example. Um, I believe the functional dependency they had was something of the nature of um, no two movie theaters in the same city can play the same movie, right? So there was this um, kind of transitive dependency that did not come across um, when you were decomposing. And because of that, when you decompose the relations, um, this uh, functional dependency had nowhere to go. It actually didn't fit into either one of the relations you were decomposing. And this is kind of a known issue with Boyce-Codd normal form. So adding this or statement uh, here to the initial definition we had, the left side of the functional dependency needs to contain a key, or this part now that we're adding addresses that. And what it gives us is third normal form. So for ev the new definition that we're working with for third normal form, it's not new for boys cod normal form, sorry, it's just boys cod is what we discussed. Now the definition for third normal form is the same as boys cod normal form, that the left side of the functional dependency needs to contain a key, or the right side consists of prime attributes only. Now, you're like, Brian, what is a prime attribute? I haven't heard this before, and you're right. Well, maybe you have, but I haven't said it. So a prime attribute is an attribute that's a member of a key. So simply stated, um, you know, if the attribute has nothing to do with the key itself, it's not prime. And what we're saying here is that you can um, use the functional dependency and you can say that the attributes are part of the relation, not just if they are on the left side of the key, you can also say, or if the right side contains only prime attributes, then it's okay. Um, that functional dependency can be part of the original relation, and it would not be a functional dependency um, that would be in violation and would cause you to have to break out a relation. All right, so it does change a little bit how and when you break out relations. Um, it's intended to fix that problem that's described here in example 3.25. So if you want to see that, you can kind of play through um, you know, read through example 3.25, and if you want to write it down as you go, you can kind of see what they're saying. It is a, a rare case. It depends on your functional dependencies. Um, and it also means that third normal form is a little bit more relaxed than Boyce-Cott normal form. All right, so that's the difference. They're, they're very, very similar. Um, but because of that problem, Boyce-Cott normal form is a little bit um you know, harder to, to use in everyday life because it is possible that you could run into this problem and then that might cause you grief in the future. Third normal form doesn't run into the problem, but it's a lot harder to run the algorithm out the way we did on paper, right? So that's why you're responsible for voice cod normal form and the examples I gave previously and be able to actually do the algorithm on paper. Third normal form, I'm going to show you how to do that in practice because that's how it's used. When we actually build these relations, we actually build them, you know, with third normal form. Um, there's also a lot more information on this if you want to check it out in the book, um, and I, I invite you to. I'm going to kind of lean a little bit more away from the theory at this point because I want to get into the nitty gritty of how we actually build this stuff. Um, so I invite you to continue reading the additional theory on third normal form, but remember I'm going to be really testing you on kind of the flow I take in these slides and the examples that I give. Um, okay, so to understand third normal form, we have to understand both first and second normal form because the components of each of those uh, is brought up. So second normal form includes everything in first normal form and what second normal form adds, Third normal form includes both first and second, and what third normal form adds. So let's start by understanding first normal form. First normal form basically requires these three things to be true. And I wanted to just mention really quick before I get into it that the book does a very poor job of describing first and second normal form. 
And it doesn't, it treats this really honestly all as theory, and it, it doesn't break it down on the practical side. So what you're seeing here isn't actually in the book. There's some little blurb at the top that acknowledges that first and second normal form exist. It gives some pitiful definition of first normal form, and it doesn't even, yeah, I don't remember it addressing second normal form at all, or it's vice versa. But either way, this these couple slides coming up just aren't in the book, so don't don't be scratching your head looking for them. So first normal form requires the following to be true. Uh, the first is that each component, remember that's our field, right? Where I'm going to be using the, the kind of practical terms uh, more intertwined now before I probably said them a lot by mistake. Um, but I'm going to intertwine kind of the theory names and the, the practical names. So remember in theory, a row is a tuple, right? You know, a column is an attribute and a component um, is a field, right? So, or did I, yeah, um, I think I got that right. Um, so here we're just saying that each component, meaning the value in, um, you know, a column or an attribute has a single value. And what I mean by that is you can't have like a, say, phone number field that has multiple phone numbers in the same field, uh, you know, separated by commas. So say I had my Brian Gorman Lee student record and in there I had three phone numbers, but they were all in the same, there's only one phone number attribute and they're all in there and they're just separated by commons, commas. That's no good, right? Additionally, the attribute data must be of the same type in each tuple. So what I'm saying here is that a column can only have one data type and that means that each row has to abide by that data type. So if you imagine that, like say I have um, a student record and it denotes the last school attended or something, or, or the current school, let's go with that. And, you know, I have some rows where values are like Marist and, you know, uh, Stanford and Dutchess Community College and whatever. Um, and then I have like, you know, a, a tuple or a row that has a value, um, you know, that says, uh, you know, river and river's not a school like river's actually a river or it's a who knows it's just not a school right that doesn't make sense and it's more than just saying it's a string or a date or an integer what i really mean by type here is just like you would think of it in ob object oriented programming like if that thing's supposed to be a school it should represent a school right so that's one of the the other things that first normal form requires uh, and the last is that each tuple, meaning row, remember, must be unique. So you can't have, for example, a relation with three attributes, uh, first name, last name, and email address, and have two rows or tuples in it that both have Brian for first name, Gorman Lee for last name, and, you know, brian.gormanlee at maristudy.edu for email address. That is a violation of first normal form. Because you could say that that relations key is the composite of all three of those attributes, which is fine, um, but I would still have to have at least one of them be different. And of course, that's not a good key and it's not a good relation, but again, that's, that's beyond the point. We're still in first normal form. So all tuples have to be unique. You can't have two rows that are the same. Um, you can have a composite key that comprises all of the attributes in, in the table if you want to in the, in the relation, um, but you still can't have two tuples in that instance that are perfectly the same. They have to have at least one thing different. Now, second normal form requires all of those things we just talked about, but in addition, uh, it also says that all attributes are dependent on the key. So what I mean by that is like, you know, if I have in there, um, you know, say my, my student uh, data, right? And then somewhere in there, I have an attribute um, that has to do with, um, you know, a warehouse name, right? That has nothing to do with the actual student. And I'm sure the key would be like my student ID or my social security number or something like that. Like the warehouse has nothing to do with that. So that would have to get broken off into its own um, table. Let me give another example because a warehouse really has nothing to do with the student. So it's kind of a weird one because you'd be like, well, why do I even have that relation? Let's talk about, you know, 
um, a course that you're taking, right? So let's imagine that you have the student record and then somewhere in there, there's a attribute that has to do with um, you know, like a course number or something like that, that you're currently taking. Again, um, this is not directly related to the key. So it needs to be broken out. And second normal form starts this process of actually breaking out relations, right? It requires that the attributes in the relation are in fact dependent on the key. It's also, you know, bringing in the functional dependencies and, and it's the start of that process of what we were doing with Boyce-Cotton normal form. Third normal form now takes it a, another step further. It requires everything in the first two, first normal form and second normal form. And it also requires that attributes can be determined only by the key in the table and no other attribute. So what we're saying there is basically that not only do they have to be determined by the key, but you can't get away with having some functional dependency on another attribute within uh, the, the relation that has nothing to do with the key, right? So this kind of like transitive functional dependency that, that saved you before might not now. So for example, imagine I had a uh, relation and in the relation I had more than one um, attribute that talked about that course, right? Maybe there's a course number and a course name and stuff like that. And, but it still has nothing to do with key. The key has to do with the student, right? So at that point, any functional dependency that was transitive can't really help there because the functional dependency that goes between those two non-key attributes also has to be removed and put out into its own table. We're going to uh, review these in an example that's coming up. So this was just the purpose of this was to kind of define it and I wanted you to see bullet point like what defines first normal form, second normal form, third normal form, etc. Now we're going to present that information uh, in an example so you can see how it practically breaks down.